pride. Proverbs 16, verses 18 to 19. Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fool. Better it is to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Pride is an attribute of the devil, and it is one of the characteristics of the fallen nature of man. The Pride of Life Pride is the forerunner of destruction. Once a person is filled with pride, then you can be sure that destruction is looming over such. Pride leads to warfare. It is the lack of submission to a higher authority or the estimation of oneself beyond what is necessary. Pride makes people to think of themselves more highly than they ought. Pride is destructive. It equates one with God and makes one a rival with Him. The simple fact that this sin was the first sin ever should show you the gravity of it. Not only is this sin the first sin ever to be committed, but it is a sin that occurred in heaven. The simple fact that this sin occurred in heaven should show you the gravity of it. Pride is something no one should entertain. I know you have heard this a million times. I know you have heard sermons about pride before, but that should show you how big of a problem pride is. God hates it. Anyone that is puffed up is in a way trying to position himself as God. This is because God sits on high, and pride attempts to exalt a person to the position of God. That is the reason the Bible says that God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So we see the reason God resists the proud is because they try to become God, and therefore have to be resisted. God will not share His glory with anyone else. Isaiah 42 verse 8 I am the Lord, that is my name and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. A creation cannot be equal to his creator. Pride attempts to enthrone its victims as God. Pride goes before a fall. Once a person is proud, the end of such can be accurately determined as destruction. The devil was the originator of pride. The warfare that took place in heaven was birthed by the pride of Lucifer. Prophet Isaiah gave us the account of how the devil came puffed up in Isaiah 14 verses 13 to 15, which reads, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. The greatest aim of pride is to seek self-glorification and exaltation. Pride is self-centered. It seeks to be seen, honored, and eulogized. We can notice from Isaiah's account that the devil used the word I will five times. He was self-centered. He wanted to rise above his maker. Pride is all about me, 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 me. We can go on and on studying the attributes of pride from the fall of Lucifer. His pride led to his rebellion. When a person begins to fight church authorities behind the scenes, and craving the attention of people, he or she is exhibiting pride. Pride will make a person feel too big to obey correct and proper doctrines. This is why you see people start churches that follow doctrines of devils. Pride leads to a fall. We must all realize that what brings people down always follows them to the top. 
Never get puffed up because God placed you on a lofty height. If you do, you will suddenly find yourself in a fallen state. Pride begins from the heart before it is physically expressed. In fact, pride can be passively expressed. That is, it just stays right in the heart, but is not actively expressed. Whether passively or actively expressed, pride remains pride. God does not judge our actions. He also judges the intent of our hearts. 1 Samuel 16 verse 7 says, But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. It will interest you to know that the devil had never acted out his plans. It was still in his heart when God declared his judgment and he was cast out of heaven. God has a system of picking everything that goes on in our hearts. The thoughts of our hearts are not hidden from God. Pride hinders your prayers. 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14 If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. People think that getting on their knees and putting their palms together in prayer is humility. It's not. You could be on your knees with your palms together in a physical posture of humility, but your heart could be full of pride. You know, I wonder, I just wonder how many people's prayers have been blocked by this sin. Isaiah 16 verse 6 says, We have heard of the pride of Moab. He is very proud, even of his haughtiness, and his pride, and his wrath, but his lies shall not be so. Proud people speak vain words and rely on their strength because they don't ever want to be seen as people who need help. A lot of people have harmed themselves with this evil trait. Instead of them trying to seek for help when they are in need, they will rather die in silence. Unfortunately, believers are victims of this also. Pride leads us nowhere. It works out the shame of those who possess it eventually. The Bible says that all the pride and haughtiness of Moab shall not find footing. They will all become as lies. That is exactly what happens to proud people. King Nebuchadnezzar was lifted with pride and God dealt with him. Across the scriptures, we find God himself resisting the proud and pulling them down in the wrath of his jealousy. It was so for Herod when he boasted before people without acknowledging the supremacy of God. His judgment was such an astounding one, worms ate him up immediately. That is the disaster that pride brings to its host. Nebuchadnezzar was lifted with pride, and he proclaimed that it was by his strength that he achieved all the glories of Babylon. His judgment was pronounced in a dream he didn't understand, until prophet Daniel interpreted it to him. Daniel 4 verses 24 to 25 says, This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which is come upon my lord the king, that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee, till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. There is no good result that pride can ever yield, it destroys our relationship with people and with God. Therefore, we must desist from every act of pride 
and ask the Lord to clothe us with humility. Finally, the humility of Christ is our scale for measuring pride. We must grow in humility, like our Lord was subjected to God, although he was equal with him. Now focus on this phrase, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. It takes humility to totally depend on God through prayer. When we wake up and go about our day without praying to God, it could mean we can handle the matters of the day without the help of God. We put God to the side and say, don't worry God, I have this day covered. I am the captain of my own ship and I will order my day today. We do not know what life may throw at us that day and it takes the grace of God to victoriously go through each day. From this verse, we see that one of the things that was restricting the people of God from praying and seeking his face was pride. Sometimes our flesh wants to do things by itself without God's help. It takes humility to ask for God's grace to perform tasks that we might be very skilled in doing. It might seem silly, but let's think about it. Learnt skills such as writing reside in our memories. Without the proper functioning of a person's memory, it is impossible to demonstrate this skill. It's all by the grace of God. There is something very serious about prayerlessness. The link between prayerlessness and pride is undeniable. You see, when you don't pray, you are practically saying that you are the perfect sinless child of God, the one who never committed a sin, the one who walked on water, the one who raised the dead, the one who cured a woman with the issue of blood, the one who was born in Bethlehem, raised in Nazareth, the one who died on Friday and rose up early on Sunday morning, the one who ascended into heaven. He needed to pray while he was on earth, but you don't. So Jesus needed to constantly pray and seek the face of the Father, but you don't, but we don't. I am included in this. Prayerlessness is one of the sure ways that shows you that pride is in your life. Over the years, you have heard me say this verse, God resists the proud. If there is one thing you don't want, and I don't want, is to live a life with God against us. You must fight pride and defeat it before it defeats you. To resist pride, you must clothe yourself with humility. God resists the proud just the same way he resisted the devil, but he gives grace to the humble and exalts them.